Hey everyone, I'm just finishing up another I another iPhone 6 Plus Touch Disease, Touch IC Repair, Touch Defect Repair, uh, whatever we're calling it today. I think the commonly accepted term is touch disease. Uh, but <clears throat> anyways, um, after you replace these ICs, sometimes you're going to run into issues with stuff that don't work. Um, one of the things that I just dealt with on this one is um, no proximity sensor after after IC replacement and um, I can't really give credit to what I'm about to show you uh, I can't really take credit for what I'm about to show you um, I learned this watching iPad rehabs YouTube channel and this is something that it looks like just as right-hand man Mark Schaefer I think his name is um, this is something that um, that he had said to do if you had no proximity sensor and I thought it was a little bit nuts because um, I had some issues being able to pick this rubber coating off without lifting components with it but really the trick is to get it hotter than hell um, I set my air on um, 200 and I hold it pretty close um, 200 C and I really heat it up hot I heat it up to almost the point where uh, to where the solder on the shields melt and I heat it up really hot uh, but anyway then the rubber coating kind of um, it, it flicks away pretty easy and then uh, what I was doing was I pull up the schematics and isolate exactly which ones were proximity sensor and I was getting in with my micro pencil and soldering it, each individual one of them and it it kind of sucks and once in a while you'll take one off with the micro pencil or push with the tweezers and flip it over to the side and it's just kind of a pain in the ass so um, I wound up going back to what, what Mark said about reflow in the entire area and it, it actually works pretty good in this case. Um, but uh, so anyways, this is what this winds up looking like. What I do, Alt T, yeah, okay. So here's this board after I have done this. Um, and I'm gonna look through here. Um, so what I'm doing, just like Mark said, is I actually heated this thing heated this up hot and first thing I did was I took um, and and flicked away the top of them uh, what I did do I would take a pair of, of really sharp tweezers and I would like stick it in right beside them and then run it up beside them like that and take off the whole layer but that was taking a shitload of components off too and then I would have to sit here and um, and put them back on it was really tedious and time-consuming so what I've done here just like Mark said was I picked all the rubber off of here now um, it's hard to get down in between them and what I wound up doing to get down in between them is I use this straight pin I'm gonna just zoom here a little bit because I am nowhere near close enough to do that well maybe I can do this shit with one eye I don't know so anyway um, no, no way in hell. So I started using the straight pin, and the straight pin is thin enough to get down in between them. Something else that works pretty good is like uh, insulin needles. So anyway, I went through and I made sure these were reasonably cleaned up. Um, you know, all the black rubbery overfill off the top of them. Um, and then I went ahead and cranked the air up to something that would that would melt it. Okay, I'm not exactly sure where I was at just now. Um, busy shop, touch disease, whatever. Okay, um, so anyway, I picked all the rubber coating off all of these. Um, it was very tedious to get the rubber out from between them, but it is also very important. Straight pin works good. Insulin needles are even smaller. So, um, so clean all the rubber off of that about halfway up the connector like Mark said now it's not all of these components that are causing your proximity sensor issues but you know the front microphones wrapped up in this little strip too on this side so you know it, it, it kind of is a good idea to flow them all so once I got a molten you'll notice when you're picking the stuff off there will be one end or the other of these that are actually loose um, so what I wind up doing once I got the solder melted and I can tell it's floating um, if, uh, if they haven't like aligned themselves I'll put the tweezers down on top of them and I'll just kind of lightly push on each one as as they're molten and make sure the pad is melted the components melted and everybody's happy I don't know if I left out the part where I put flux on this but that's kind of step one before you make it molten so flux it then melt it um, now this um, uh, this component here this is also for proximity sensor and I wind up seems like refloating that thing isn't quite enough I wind up 
putting the tweezers down on top of it and then smashing it down on the blobs to where they squeeze all out the sides. And then I'll take the tweezers off of it and then I'll nudge it just to fuzz and make sure it pulls back into position and, and then I know it's proper. You know, looking at it on the screen right there, on, on my computer screen, it, it looks off to the side. But looking at it in the microscope, it looks perfectly in the center. I'm not, I'm not exactly sure what that is. But uh, anyways, I've already tested this one. This phone has a working proximity sensor. It did not after I, after I replaced the ICs. Um, and it's fixed. So, Jesso, Mark, thank you. That saves me a lot of time. Now that I've taken the time to learn how to perfectly pick that rubber coating off of them little... Anyways, that's it. No proximity sensor. This will most likely fix it. Um, I have had a couple that this didn't fix it and it wound up being other stuff. Um, but this fixes it on most of them and um, it's a pretty big headache behind me because you're going to run into it. Not on all of them. Some of them go run into it. So um, now I don't. Anyways, that's all for this video. Thanks for watching. Have a good day.